Wonderful. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Economic Space TV, Season 1, Episode 5, about Chapter 4. I'm John Nixon, Chief of Staff at Economic Space Agency. It's good to be here. And thanks, everybody, for joining us live. It's really great. Um, how we're going to do it is start off with like a discussion of Chapter 4 with the team here. Uh, and thanks, guys, for being here. I'm going to introduce you in a second. And, uh, um and uh and then kind of halfway through or maybe three-fourths of the way through we can kind of open it up and i'll unlock the the screens as it were um and uh and we can have a chat which would be great okay so yeah so we've got uh excelly uh ceo co-founder economic space agency uh, <laughs> and jorge lopez uh, um, chief architect of economic space agency dick bryan um, chief economist, and we've got John Beller, uh, chief economic space designer. Um, so here we go. Excited to be here with you all. I'm going to start sharing the screen of chapter four because that just is, I just find it so much easier to, because uh, I have to read this stuff a few times anyway. So it's just, it's just better for it to be right there in front of me. Whether anybody else wants it to be or not. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, this was wild because you know in Economic Space Agency, right now in our kind of move towards the publishing of the book and the pre-sale of the token, uh, in a few months here, you know, it's we've been working with the Labs node, and organizing that as kind of a, an example of a lot of the material in here it's attempting to be the material in here. Uh, even though we don't have the economic space protocol, the code behind it, we still want to exhibit um, the mechanisms of it because I think that, and this is what kept on occurring to me this time, you guys, is like the, it's the little distinctions, isn't it, that really make a big difference in what's being proposed, I think, by us. It's the, and, I, and I made note of a few of them. It's like some, some things that you could easily pass over in like a critical theory book and be like, oh, it could, be, could mean this, it could mean that. But there's a couple of distinctions here that I was really impressed with uh, this time. And uh, I think when we get into it, I'll be excited to um, discuss them. Uh, but yeah, maybe we could understand uh, or, or begin um, with kind of maybe Dick and Jorge kind of discussing a bit about like what's at stake in the performance chapter. It's getting a lot of notifications. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would just be nice uh, to kind of, uh, uh, get a little intro, sure. I guess, um, for those who didn't get a chance to to read it because I posted it down there. Uh, John, can you open my video too? I I, I don't know. Oh, I sure. sent out accidentally. It seems so. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, but while you're doing it, I can also start by saying that kind of a, for me, it's, <clears throat> this is an important move in the in the in the in, in the in the dramaturgy of the book. Like what's happening here when we move from 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 chapter three to chapter four, because the kind of we are continuing what what started in chapter three, which is like rethinking the rethinking the like uh, what is what is we move from individual to an agent. We re move from the from the the old conception of market to a market as a space of exchange and a space of exchange and communication, and now we take the the next category the production and start like ex expanding, ex 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 exploding it into this, what we are calling performance. Yeah, because you say, because earlier on there in chapter three, there's this description of the other kinds of price, right? That Hayek would, would be about kind of a direct price, but then there's these three other kinds of price that are suggested that then need a place to land or play out or, or a data stream that feeds them, right? And that seems like what chapter four is about in a way. It's like being like, well, what is the what are the things we're going to do, and how are we going to present them such that they could function as data streams to help produce these other kinds of prices? Like uh, I can I can go to it um, because it's direct priced, which is the one that we would know. Here it is, um, most naturally, and then there is indirect attribute and a synthetic price. Um, so it gets referenced in chapter four. We can we can hit it. Them, but yeah, maybe, maybe Dick is yeah, yeah, 
Sorry, John, did you want to say something? I just wanted to say, I wanted you to say something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is flowing really well. So, so, so just as a little bit of background before we get to, to the, the, the different notions of price, because Joel's mm -hmm. right, the, the, these four concepts are necessary for performances to play out as a circuit of uh, the performance and then the conditions of reproduction of the performance. But for a long time in, in earlier drafts of this, of this document, the issue of performances we were so, pretty much silent on. Uh, and that, that was really because the, the whole protocol design can only ever really handle a process of exchange. And, and so mm. production, as we know from Marx, is an interruption in the process of exchange. Um, but clearly, you know, when you're talking post-capitalism, <clears throat> one of the critical issues is how does stuff get produced and how is it different from how it gets produced within capitalism? So I think we, we should be talking about that as well. <laughs> but what, I'd, what I'd, I guess I'd like to emphasise here is that for me, in my mind, where this positions follows broadly the way Marx works through volume one of Capital. You know, that you start with exchange because, because that's the basis in which a unit of price and aspirationally, a unit of value is going to be denominated. We haven't yet to, hadn't yet discovered what value is because nothing's been nothing new has been created when you're talking about exchange. So we start with exchange, but then you've got to make the jump to 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 production. And for yeah, for for Marx, the jump is about saying he's only interested in production really as a process of extraction. So. How do you reconcile producing new stuff with a labour contract that says workers produce a surplus for, for, for capital? We're, we're starting clearly in a very different direction. We're starting with exchange so as to get a handle on different notions of price, um, different notions of how a network can transfer uh, ownership and other attributes. And then we want to get into the story of what makes a post-capitalist economy, uh, our depiction of post-capitalist economy, so different from how it's done in so much other literature. And that other literature mm. is always wanting to talk about, you know, either central planning or, or at one end and, and the virtues of central planning and directions from the top down or starting with much more collectivist uh, communal notions that... that that all that historical evidence shows don't scale. So we've got to occupy that central space of having pr the production process dis determined in a, in a distributed way on the one hand, but enable it to coordinate in a way that it can scale. So, so that, that's probably the, 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 mm -hmm. the background. I, I think people will have noticed if they've read it, we're still silent about having dictates about what should happen within a workplace, you know, who should make the decisions, how, how the benefits of, of income uh, or, or net revenue are shared, all of those sorts of things we, we are silent on, but by being silent, we, we're making it a space for discovery and invention. Um, I think that's probably all I'd like to say as a, as a, as a preliminary thing except to add one more little thing because I only thought of that after I started the sentence about that's all I want to say. And that, and that is in this chapter, as with every other chapter, the, the analytical task is to, is to recognise conceptual interestingness about how we imagine post-capitalism. That has to be reconciled with programmability. And so, so it's about how to give order to the things that all of us who are interested in post-capitalism, we, we all have certain ideals and views about how we would think about production processes. How do we present it? How do we design it in a form that is codifiable? And how does codifiability then actually transform what that aspiration is? So it's that constant backwards and forwards between between the vision and the, 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 the programmability of it. And and I think that shows through, and you can tell in this chapter, some little bits are focusing on the codifiability and, and others are talking more expansively. And, 
and the question for evaluation, is, one of the questions for evaluation is can we get these coming together effectively? Yeah. That's all uh, I want to say. Can I just jump in? Uh, mm. I mean, yeah. not, not to take any of the, the wind out of X's sails, but in fact, just to like say something about the um, source of that wind. Um, I'd like to just add a little historical reflection on performance mm. as well, um, because it's such an important category here. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the chapter does, I think, a really um, significant job in untangling um, a new way of, of thinking about performance and uh, the possibility for organizing it. Uh, that I, I think it's important to recognize that it's not a it's not purely an invention this um, notion of performance or the performance theory of value mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a, it's a historical emergence <clears throat> which is um it can be situated in the context of the transformation of labor um in relationship to the growth of technicity uh and and so you know in industrial uh forms and uh what Marx was thinking it's perfectly possible to sort of like isolate the workplace from the rest of the social space and think about what the wage is the transaction. But with the rise of what um, autonomous Marxism called the social factory and sort of the distribution of production beyond the factory walls into the social, mm -hmm. we have have other categories for thinking about uh, extraction and what someone like Paulo Virno will call unremunerated labor. Um, and, you know, Virno has this term virtuosity, which I think is quite useful. I mean, people have thought about attention economies, um, cognitive capitalism, all these other ways of sort of interfacing with value creation um, through technological um, processes and processing become open up this other sort of space of creativity, which I think we're capturing with this term performance. And so, in a way, I just mm -hmm. part of what I'm saying is that um, the what, what I read in chapter four is an attempt to reclaim um, a uh, an, an organization of production which is already emergent um, in the techno social. And because performance is being extracted by capitalism primarily, we don't have the instruments or the tools to organize performativity in ways that do not produce and reproduce the value form. Here we're looking at something where, you know, yes, this opens up. This becomes uh, by reorganizing performance and the contracting of performativity uh, in uh, a really nuanced uh, way with uh, an emergent kind of grammar, we might be able to um, avoid extraction and capitalization. Uh, and actually produce another kind of value or that set of yes, values. Yes, yes, and and that that other kind, which Dick was also referring, kind of that it's not the well, well, well like saying that we we are we remain silent in what, how how it's organized, but kind kind of for that how it is organized, how it, it it's shared, that actually becomes the new value creation layer. That becomes the the asset. Like how good is the economic space? How is it organized? How do you share? into the risks and, and the upside, how how is that organized value which attracts at, attracts people will be there. And is that yeah. because it's it's uh it's inverting where the where the valuation moment is by putting it truly in the hands of the agents around the performance to say, you know, do we think this is a good thing to do, not just can you sell it on the other end? Is that is that Sure. Is that what that uh, is kind sure. of love, bringing it back to the agents? Yeah. I'd love to hear Dick and Jorge on, the, on this, but what, but I, what I'm what I see is um, mm. that the mediations um, for the organization of productivity are no longer properties of fixed capital, and the protocols are no longer um, uh, organized by by capital itself in a leveraged way in relationship to performativity. The fact that you have um, agents who are effectively on um, equal footing. Uh, makes the makes their agency um uh, uh more um how would i put this uh less um marginalized in relationship to the organization of the outcomes where you know whereas a factory gives you a very specific role at a certain uh, relationship and uses the leverage of your own precarity to cheat you out of your, the value of your productivity in a certain way. Here, the sociality can actually sustain relationships where decision-making takes on a different form and know-how is of a different character. Joel, can you go to the very beginning of the chapter? Because I think it's very important, the, sure. like the first yeah. paragraphs. Maybe I can just uh, say before we leave this, but this is what I was thinking when I was asking that question, like that, that, that you're kind of making this stand for between kind of the, the older Marxian approach to like labor time 
and the Hayeki and like everything is already information as price. And here you have, you're saying that I like to tell you, like it happens here, value relates to the social recognition of the performance itself, not to the social recognition of the outputs of performance. And I've never thought of it before, the social recognition of the outputs being purchase. You know, that's what purchase is. You're validating, you're like, okay, yeah, this is a good output. And so that, that it's switching that around. And you say that right here. Um, yeah. yeah. Come back to it. Or so just, yeah, Jorge? No, I say like more than switching, shifting. Shifting the, the, the significance of the validation where it occurs, but uh, yeah. go yeah. ahead, quick. Oh, sorry, just while Joel, thank, thanks, Jorge. Just while Joel's scrolling back, I, I was just going to say that um, that we need to recognize and should talk about that there are two levels of social verification val validation here. One is within the producing organization, the agent. That there is no presumption that someone is is the kingpin who lays down the rule because they own everything. Although we've got to acknowledge that within any little group dynamic, someone could start taking control of becoming authoritarian. You know that group dynamics have a way of of uh, of uh, gravitating in that direction at least sometimes. So the other issue that's about staking is when a performance is offered to the network for judgment, for, 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 for valuation, for assessment. Part of what is being offered, and we could even think of it as a discrete performance, is what are the dynamics that happen inside the workplace or the, inside the work process? You know, it, is, it, is it run in, a, in, a, in an open, transparent, democratic, uh, non-exploitative way? Are the work practices environmentally sound? Are they socially compatible with the community in which production happens? These are all part of the evaluation. So it, it even compared with that, any idealised notion, you know, of a socialist workplace, of a workers collective, we're saying this reaches beyond that. It's not just that the, the workers in the collective are happy, but that the network as a whole looks inside and says, this is the sort of stuff, this is the sort of way of performing, of creating that we want to back, we want to endorse. So, so again, it's going back to Joel's point, it's not about endorsing outputs. The staking factor says mm. we are endorsing the process by which the outputs are produced, uh, by whatever criteria the network chooses. Well, and, and you use uh, as an example, uh, sorry, you use as an example, no you know, an experimental program in the UK to reduce um, uh, prison recidivism, right? As a map, and, and you use that as an example of saying like, this was, let's try an intervention that can reduce that. And that's something that's worth investing in and use that as an example of what you're kind of talking about, right? Mm. Mm. The, the, mm. Yeah, the, yeah, it's about how, it's about processes and and outcomes and as well as outputs that are being evaluated. So the whole flow, if you like, is mm. is fair, fair game for the network to have a view on. Okay. And we know that happens yeah. a bit in capitalism, you know, that, that certain, uh, you know, sports shoe companies get get uh, get criticised for their use of indentured labour or other other companies get criticised for their, their, um, their environmental impacts. But it's usually a critique that happens after the event. Uh, and, and and humiliation is the is the is the path through mm. mediation. Whereas this mm. is a much more organic, uh, ongoing um, mode of of approval. Hey, can, can we go, go a little bit back? Because I think that we need to kind of spend a little bit time. Like, what what is what is a performance? Um, so so what what is a performance? And that's that's why I kind of wanted to go here in the, the beginning because. It kind of gets um, there are some some important uh, words here. So I, I would like to, in fact, ask Jorge a little bit. So so if I would say that the way we use performance, it's like an it's in fact like an economic word, a term for a protocol, or mm -hmm. or kind of a, the, the key thing here is that the that anything anything informatic can be expressed as performance. I, I really think that's that's the key. Could you take it from there or kind of for, uh, uh, 
uh, talk about the performance from the informatic perspective a little bit. Like, what mm-hmm. is it? Like, how it 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 ties the events together? Yeah. Um, so so so. What what is important to notice about the performance again is that that it is um, both a in this case a uh, a a process that is partly uh, done by the computational substrate and and, and partly done uh, uh, by by the social where we talk about the social layer the people the agents uh, in the network and. Uh, how much uh, it's it's handled by the computational, how much is by the social, it depends on the performance. And what is important to to, to sort of like um, highlight uh, with the performance concept is uh, another way of saying like uh, we remain silent about how people should come together and perform. It's we remain um, uh, uh, or, or basically what we're saying is we're giving the the right, the capacity to program, to design that, the sociality around the performance to the to the designer of a particular economic age in a particular economic space. So what's really interesting again is that the, 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 the economic space as a programmable um, um, platform or substrate uh requires this 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 category in order to to um plug or 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 or, or bridge uh from an economic perspective the inputs into the outputs so from a higher mm-hmm. order from a higher perspective what you have in an economic space is there's there's certain inputs something happens the performance and there's certain certain outputs but there's there's a lot of room for designing that performativity and um we could very well just like encode as a performance a corporation and it, all its all its uh you know internal incentives and tracking whatever but the point is that we don't need to rely on other on those prescribed pre-existent scripts uh from from old forms but rather than People can actually innovate here, so the, the 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 performance creation, performance inscription, performance delineation, it itself, it is a creative medium, right? Uh, uh, this category, it's such that opens up like uh, what otherwise would be thought only as production, into any sort of informational uh, um, artifact. Created by multiple agents by their interactions, right? So the 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 trouble, of course, with such a um, high abstraction is then grounding it with particular examples, right? So, but 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 just to put examples of very different performances, we could talk about a purely passive performance in which what the economic space is all about measuring air quality, for instance, and that somehow as an input you have air quality measurements as an output, you have a process of, in, in, in between a process of validation of the truth or the, the value or how that is related to different uh, uh, other performances. As, as an output, you have some sort of like, a, uh, you know, clean air uh, credits or, 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 or whatever. So that will be like purely passive and abstract, right? There's, there's something in spo- in, overimposed on, on, a, on, on economic activity that already exists. On the other hand, you can have a performance that is about, um, let's say, co-writing a document, right? All, all people like being involved in the creation of one document and the document being uh, the, the the sort of the stream of outputs or the output, right? So that that also can be uh, uh, coordinated uh, and, and inscribed in a performance. Or you could have like even a factory, an old style factory, that also can be encoded as a performance. But what is key in here is it doesn't have to be that and be anything that we can think of as an application right now, like a web app. This is where where, mm. where you would encode this, like economic application, economic uh, medium 
it's it's through the definition of the performance. So again, like the performance is 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 but a verb, a category in a grammar, to inscribe uh, uh, different forms of economic activity, right? So it is it is a really high high order abstraction. Actually, it's like one of that the performance and the uh, and the commodity token are the most uh, programmable surfaces of the protocol. Like you can make anything uh, a, a, a commodity token and anything a performance. In fact, many of these commodity tokens, what they actually encode are performances, the recognition of performances, right? So um, there's yeah, a, that's that's what I can say about that. Yeah, and there's a I think there's a question we can choose to take up now or, or later, but I think it always kind of comes up when it relates to kind of open decision, you know, like remaining silent or offering a certain amount of designability, which is like the mm -hmm. ability to kind of co-opt that. You know, or in the in the example that you gave about an old style factory, would the old style factory be run in a new way though? Because all the all the people involved in that factory operation of performances also have their own agency in that, so it composes a different kind of a thing than would be under kind of private ownership. Now, that's up for anyone. If anyone wants to kind of comment on that. Yeah, and 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 I mean, what what gets creative is is likely going to be very different. Um, as as Jonathan explained uh, earlier, the the capacities, the economic capacities given to agents within the protocol, are uh, not limited to the to the current economic capacities, right? So when people go into the designing of different performances, the question is, what happens if everyone can give? credit to the for to the to the to the factory for instance and mm -hmm. that 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 is a recognized forms right now like uh, uh somewhere in the book uh dick yeah. explains about like how the laborer is actually giving the credit that's not being recognized uh as a, mm -hmm. a credit giving mm -hmm. agent and so in this case like what happens when it can <laughs> what sort of leverage it can have uh what happens if uh rather than having a you know this 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 uh because of this capa capacity these two categories of agents, those that have the money and set the rules and those that don't have the money and follow the rules. What if everyone can set the rules and everyone can follow the rules? What sort of dynamic needs to be negotiated there, right? So it's it's it, in knowing that that these functions are going to break old paradigms, uh, uh, this remains like open, but also at the same time, we really don't know what people are going to come up with. So <laughs> we, we can yeah. expect very different relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's gonna, if you go a little bit back up, so there's another important word. There was the protocol, uh, and then there is the script. Yeah, the, the, that. The, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of a uh, we've used also score uh, as a word, and it kind of uh, refers to what uh, Jonathan was referring to. Paulo Virnos, uh, virtuos, virtuos is also uh, he he he's a score. Uh, there as as an example, but kind of for that when like Hora was like, explaining that like you, you can start to script performances. There are these informational events, and you can script their relationships and propose them, uh, and it becomes like a. I, I can already see that it will become like this place of creativity, like uh, that we haven't like explored yet at all. Uh, what kind of performances people can, what kind of scripts, like relations between informational events you can start to propose and, and see. Because scripts are also thought of as like, if something's scripted, it's not a good thing. But here, scripts, or it's not creative, right? If something's scripted, it means it's set. Um, but here, scripts are like, they're more kind of emergent in that sense, or they're they're propositional. Yeah, look. Yeah. Uh, Pasolini, yeah. Pasolini called the the film script a structure that wants to be another structure, and I think that's kind of, <laughs> kind, of, kind of kind of a good image for for what a script uh -huh. is. It's a space of creativity and and a space of um potentiality, which is then an offer, right? And, and so not everybody's going to take up every single script. I mean, the thing is that we have a really interesting way to constellate and concatenate the act of scripting, which is to me, you know, expressivity. And this expressivity, and what we're seeing here is that expressivity and production are more deeply um, welded together in a way than they are otherwise. And so, so going back to the factory question, which I think is a really interesting one, and as Catherine mm -hmm. uh, pointed out in a in the, in the comment section, um, you know, the the whole architecture of the factory is uh, is endemic to um, a certain logic of value creation, 
right? And mm -hmm. part, of it, part of what it does is it concentrates and also externalizes costs, right? So that they can be passed on to people who are proletarianized, passed on as, you know, feminist Marxism taught us, passed on to domestic labor, which isn't even sort of visible in the sustaining mm -hmm. of the world in order to get back to the factory. So the, the, the world of discourse and representation organized by the factory is very, very curtailed. Uh, but if you all of a sudden have a have a way of creating networks and performances where all the performances impacting a particular um, moment of production can be registered strongly or weakly, depending upon um, uh, their distance from that moment, then then you have a really different character of of, of relationship, or even a different you know um, analysis of the network architecture, which is uh, necessary to produce a certain quote unquote commodity token or good. Right, and 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 that what and that representation isn't simply just like a different image of the same thing. It actually enables an expansion of the network, even a knocking down of the walls, right? An opening of the space, a creating air and ventilation. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it just implies a completely different architecture for productive relationships. Yeah, and it's kind of what we've been saying that you can you can you can you, you make them economically expressible or economically relatable, uh, uh, investable, exchangeable, liquidity creating, collateralizable, kind of a, all, all of this opens up and uh, 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 yes, and it's something yeah. Yeah. Sorry. different from, from financialization, financialization of everything or like uh, commodification of, of everything. Yeah, I think so, it's what I, what I want to say quick about that great quote, from, you know, that a script is a structure that wants another structure. And I think what kind of opened up for me in this chapter is is like what you were just saying, Excel, like this expressivity, it's it can sound kind of uh, mystical, you know, or you know, especially mystical in the technological sense that we've come to know uh, Silicon Valley and other things, or like it's just there, you know, or something like that. But if we take that quote um, and we apply it to performances and the kind of in that like uh, that shifted around perspective, then it when it says that the structure wants another structure. That means in this case that all the agents want another structure. Like that's them, it's all of us in relation to performance that are wanting it forward, right? Basically. That's what it's kind of that's what it's focused mm -hmm. on. Like that's that the performance of it, that it's even we want this to be measured in this way. Right? We want this to happen in this way. It's if it's connected to the wants of the agents in the network, in the performance, then it, it it's not just some mystical kind of a post-human. Kind of statement, but something that's quite uh, practical. No, mm -hmm. it's really the creation of, of alternative futures. You know, I mean, yeah, I that, mean that, that's what's exciting about this. It's like I mean, it gives us um, it gives our you know future casting um, in alternative economies and for alternative socialities a kind of economic dimension, which otherwise it, it just can't have. And and to me, to me, that's the most exciting part of what we're doing. Actually, is it allows us to um, create a spread. With the futures that capitalism predicts and and would uh, encode, yeah. uh, and and I mean, I think there are differing opinions here, probably about what those look like. But to me, they're all you know pretty bleak, uh, and and so the fact that we can depart from a capitalist value system of valuation and organ and product organization of production, which is by nature extractive, allows us to really wager different futures. Well, like concrete, yeah. And so here we have another um, mm -hmm. saying, so that performances express what makes a post-capitalist economy a different experience for those participating in it. It places their creativity and their intention to create social meaning at the center of the economy and scripts them as offers to the network. Right? I, I had kind of a question though, actually, for, 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 for Dick and, and Jorge, mm -hmm. anyway, about this, um, because, you know, it seems to me that uh, I haven't read through the rest of the book, you know, for for a while, so maybe maybe it's answered later. But the process of um, tokenizing, uh, creating metrics which would validate the performances and tokenizing them um, is not fully elaborated here. And I mean, I realize that's still a work in progress for 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 all of us. But I'm just wondering, like, you know, when Joel mentioned, um, you know, the recognition in today's uh, contractual um, production is purchase, right? I mean, that's true. 
uh, to a certain extent. But if, if I purchase like a, you know a fancy uh, piece of clothing, I'm not that I do. But if I, if I were to purchase a piece of fancy clothing, I'd probably be purchasing it because I want the brand recognition too. I want to be walking down the street and people say, "Oh, that's like you know uh, whatever." Um, and uh, I can't even name a designer, but um, you know. <laughs> Fendi something, um, but you know, and so someone <laughs> said, oh yeah, that's a thing, and uh, and that's also a kind of recognition too, which is um, which is something that accrues to the brand, accrues to me in a really informal way, right? I mean that 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 that, that sort of like increases my value, my in in conventional terms, it increases my sense of like you know my social being, my social currency. I'm like somebody now that I'm walking down the streets of Manhattan in this fancy you know garment, and people are producing that through the recognition. This is a whole space of economic creativity, mm -hmm. which is implicit in today's um, economy, but not fully sort of representable. Um, well, no, that's a different discussion, oh, but, oh. but not, not, not in ways that are familiar. I'm wondering if the tokenization process uh, is imagined to to, uh, to capture some of that or represent some of that or, or how, how we think about that. Um, I have I have comments mm -hmm. about this thing. Do you, do you want me to, to answer? Do you have something that you want to say? Yeah um so so this is this is uh really interesting because it's 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 basically yes to everything you said <laughs> and and the reason is yes is because that's the area of, of design right it can be that uh and it can not be at the same time so um for instance uh any event that the system may be able to capture of uh, that may be deemed of significance can be tokenized. And the token serves as some sort of like a proof of event that it's it's sort of like uh, ascribed or given some sort of value uh, once it's produced as an output. Because once it's tokenized, uh, one of the uh, uh, the descriptions we use uh, or the definition we use in there a token is basically a uh, transferable exclusive bundle of rights sometimes the exclusivity comes only like the recognition in a record that a particular event is associated to you the fact that is associated to you um what does that mean depends on the narrative created around the performance are you a sponsor okay. is that a certificate are you a supporter um is that particular token going to serve to curate uh, uh, agents that are uh, sympathetic to certain views to have access to other economic spaces, to other performances. I mean, it 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 really um, it really is a design space, both in terms of what you define qualifies a performance, what events qualify qualify as 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 tokenizable value, and most importantly, what narratives are actually the ones that the network, the agents are operating in, the, the participants are operating in, to actually uh, give give meaning to those to those tokens. Because I mean, value is the quantifiable um, uh, expression of meaning in a network, right? Before you have economy, uh, you only have like mm -hmm. meaning. But once you have exchange and pricing, it becomes valuation rather than just meaning making. But the meaning making dimension doesn't go away. So mm -hmm. um, part that we need to recognize again is the, the performances encode stories, encode narratives that are that have significance. And depending on that story is uh, how you choose which performances to encode as tokens, as events, which ones, for instance, which tokens might carry the right to, to trigger a performance, right? More like a contractual obligation. So that's the whole design space. Mm -hmm. And in here, like it's just saying like, there's this thing like anything can happen that can happen in space time. We're going to call a performance, but anything and everything can happen in space time. So it's really the largest abstraction, the most designable uh, space we have. And we don't prescribe particular answers. So it depends on the nature of the performance. Yeah. And here the event becomes key, right? In terms of these discrete yeah. events and then combinable yeah. events. Um, I found that yeah. an interesting extrapolation. And that's that's what makes them uh, um, tokenizable. The fact that the, even though we cannot consider them as technically scars, they are uniquely, mm -hmm. they, they are quantifiable. You can say there's an event, there's so many of these events, and there's going to be limited, right? And and uh, the, the, the fact also is like there's an economic dimension to these events. 
usually the, it takes it takes certain costs, certain energetic inputs, effort, performing costs to produce an event. Therefore, you're choosing those events that you're expecting to be valued, to have a meaning to the network, to serve a purpose, where the purpose is just like, uh, you know, posturing your, your support like a brand or whether the purpose is to get access to something else, right? To to be recognized as a, recognized as a higher order performance, right? Or sometimes again, a right to a future performance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Sorry, I, I, I think what I'd add, add here, which is entirely consistent with, with what's just been said, but to deal with, the, the specific issue that John raises, uh, raise, you know, what are the mechanics by which this could be recognised? I, I, I think, I think it's key to to the design in this chapter, and it probably only comes out more in the appendices than in the in in, in the substance. But to, and that was just about keeping the prose mm -hmm. clean. Um, it is is that when an agent offers a performance they lay claims to creating a certain amount of value and it's up to the network to validate whether that's claim, that, that claim is true. So, so it's not going to play itself out of saying, you know, John's target clothes are, are suddenly uh, elevated in prestige and John's strutting down, down the, uh, the streets of Manhattan as a fashionista. Uh, and, and therefore these things go up in value. It, it, it's going to be, the, the creator of the performance has to make a claim as to as to what what their value creation is and it's up to the network to confirm it and, and give a thumbs up so if if John's uh, John's clothing store goes up in 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 prestige that that's that has a value dimension to it but it's not going to happen just by the price of those clothes going up the mechanism that would have to happen here is that the performance that, that creates the clothes makes claims to creating greater value. And the network then has to validate that by saying, yes, we will confirm that your, that your claims to value creation this year are higher than last year because you're, 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 you're creating this hitherto unseen dimension of value in, in, in your clothing. So it, it can be expressed. It it might, from a current capitalist form, look a rather clunky process, because in you know capitalism, it's just going to say, oh, the price of that suddenly starts to go up because everyone wants it. It has to it has to play itself out through circuits of reproduction and validation and claims to 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 increasing value, and that comes to the issue of what is the mechanism by which the network validates these claims? Because any 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 clothing mm -hmm. producer performance could say, oh, but we're really exclusive and elite and we want to claim, um, uh, uh, you know, we, we want to make big claims to our stuff and everyone says, uh-uh, that's, that's, not, that's not fashionable. So okay. in response to what Catherine just said, I think the, the, the question is, is really important. The claim to valuation happens at the beginning. Because if valuation only happens at the end, then we're in the realm of standard markets and prices. So there has to be a claim to creation of value, sort of notionally at the beginning of the performance that then Script. gets, yeah, that, that, and that then has to be validated by the network. And the network say, you made these massive claims. We don't actually agree with it. Uh, what will the manifestation of that be? It will not necessarily be, although it could be that the price falls but that the, the value of the stake of the performer falls. Hmm. So all of this this social, um, I was going to say fickleness, but that's that's such a judgmental hmm. word. All that, that social evaluation of, of these more subtle dimensions has to play itself out through stake price. So it's less less sensitive than than than, than in, a, in a capitalist economy, but it's the way you get to value and variations in value rather than price volatility. And I think that's covered in, in the appendices and then again in, in more detail as a mechan the mechanics of the process in Chapter 7 on, on measures in the, uh, in the new economic mm. space.
but we can come back and talk more about those mechanics and what's 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 engaged uh, in the appendices at another time. But yeah, I think I think the observation that that value is a, initially a claim, not not a retrospective um, market, you know, judgment of market whim is is mm. as Catherine puts it. That's absolutely right and intentional. Yeah, and so then that that seems to you also talk about, I guess, the place of indices, you know, performance indices and value measures and how those operate there because people don't just give it a thumbs up or thumbs down or when you present a performance that you present the measure at the beginning, right? So you say, this is how we'd like to be judged. And so that you can imagine the network judging a performance proposal based on what it's saying it's gonna do, but it could also judge it based on what indices it's proposing to measure itself by. It's like, I like what you're going to do, but I'm not sure that the, the indices that you're suggesting are, are the right ones or there's better ones out there. And it seemed like what was being written about here, which I which I really like, because we're doing this in the labs node. Um, so folks from the labs node that are here, I, I'm excited to hear how this is intersecting with our kind of experimental work there. Like, uh, it's almost like playlists, the way you, you guys describe mm -hmm. it. It's like playlists of, of the measures that you want to use. Like, you know, now play that, we're going to play these hits and then, you know, we're gonna we're gonna measure it by speed. We're gonna measure it um, by amount of positive reviews in the press. We're gonna measure it by whatever. But this is like a whole other part that I, as I've said in previous kind of episodes, I think is totally we're totally untrained to think in this way. Most most people, because um, usually it comes later after, as you said, it comes from the help. But now we're talking about this is another kind of functionality we want to attach to the offer structure. I, I yeah, do, so I, it, uh -huh. something like there's um multiple directions and multiple agencies in the process of uh of evaluation because I mean just to like dwell for one more second on the target thing I mean you know whatever I don't really buy clothes at Target but um if if, mm -hmm. if I did uh, <laughs> I, I I could actually um you know make an offer to the network saying you know what I, I'm gonna take it upon myself to increase the value of uh, Target clothing by the sheer fact that I'm gonna be wearing them in a certain way. And like as an influencer type, I'm going to like, you know, make them cooler than they actually might seem otherwise. Not that I could, but you know, that this was like, you know, it, it would be possible. To, hang on, it's just so good, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it would be possible to imagine, yeah. so I'm just I'm, imagine value working in the other direction where actually, even though I'm normally in a normal economy, just a consumer, right, of something, mm -hmm. In this case, because I'm wearing it and I'm moving through space and time and I have my own relationships, I'm also a creator, a potential creator of the value of, of mm -hmm. the stock clothing. And so- Yeah, and that performance can be staked then, yes. And recognized and rewarded, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And it, could be a, it could be an index <laughs> that has also become popular in the network. If everyone's like, influencing is the way to go, right? They could be like, no, no, we don't want you to make Target you know, more valuable by going and working on their investor relations. We want you to- back this influencer track. These are the indices they were interested in. Yeah, we want to reveal the child labor and the clothing that they make. But, uh, you know, I mean, this is, there are lots of different like strategies. And the thing is that all these sort of um, questions of performativity, analysis, expressivity, these all become economic dimensions. Uh, I mean, very explicitly so. And I think that multi-directional, multi-agential um, uh, process is, is, is a way of creating volatility uh, in certain ways, but it's also a way of creating um, other outcomes because your expressivity and your performativity now has a way of manifesting itself uh, and it, in economic terms and percolating through the economy in ways that are not uh, extractive. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the other part that, that, that I think that, that we need to highlight about performance is that we're not paying so much attention so far is that um, they are the the performance. It's it's also a um, uh, primary uh, a, a mediatic artifact, right? So it's not only coordinating production in a passive way, in a way that is to be witnessed only by let's say the the agent that is participating in a particular production, but it's it's the, it's recording. It's actually witnessable by a network as a whole, right? And the process of validation is precisely the fact that it's witnessable. Uh, by more than one and like right now like what's happening with many commodities like for, for instance i don't know if you guys have seen like these uh, people that build swords and they film the whole process of building the sword 
And the fact that there's this video of the whole process of making the sword makes that particular sword all the more much special, like for 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 people mm -hmm. to buy it. That it was just like a sword that was hanging out in an apparel. So the the, the fact that 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 uh, production is taking into like already into this mediating mediating uh, dimension is being recognized by this and saying, hey, not only that, actually maybe even there's certain per performance whose sole value would be the mediatic aspect the fact that it it is being witnessed and it's being shared rather than than the actual ultimate object of it right so that came out of it so and this um, could be something that's yeah. done by a different agent right i think this is mentioned a few times in the chapter that some of these validating or opening up different value streams um can happen by you know and you can see this in the current economy because someone's going to come and do that video Right, but they could, but instead of that, them doing that as a wage labor, they instead kind of join with the performance, right? Yeah, and see what they can open up. Yeah, and um, the question, of course, is if if you can do anything with the performance, why do you you need to the, the rest of the protocols? And the interesting part is the rest of the protocols are there is precisely for interoperability. interoperability. So this 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 uh, initial. Uh, 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 um, uh, sort of Expression. definition of certain boundaries of certain structure. Okay. It's 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 to organize all the structures to be able to play nicely with each other while still providing a, a, a container, an insight that can be uh, played with in 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 any way, explored, experimented with. Right. So. Uh, a key component into why we are creating those these categories and all these protocols, pro protocols is precisely like to maintain interoperability, and most importantly, to provide like a sort of backwards compatible uh, for again only for compatibility purposes. It's a good strategy, uh, uh, set of abstractions that can work with existing economic constructs, but where very very quickly those uh, existing economic constructs reveal themselves as insufficient but therefore like uh, easily updatable right upgradable so it, this is like sort of a, a path of 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 upgradability for current uh performances right like what right now we refer to them as processes of production but then they can be re-encoded and upgraded as as performances so is that why here, like, you know, your example of the sword, does that relate to this line here? You know, that information generation that is triggered around an active exchange and the enactment of a performance can be framed as the basis for other individual agents to take positions on the performance. And so the video is in a way I mean, an example, but also kind of a metaphor of uh, the video of the sword making process is almost like already sharing out this information generation, all of this all these bits of what it takes, who this person is, what kind of conditions they work in, what's the story behind it. And it triggers an act of exchange or staking, agents being like, oh, that I could take a position on what's happening here. Yeah, it's basically saying, hey, all the all the all the happenings that are part of an uh, of, 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 of an economic performance become information by which we can ascribe value or by which we can evaluate uh the, the the that which is happening right and the way i do it is eventually it's like by staking not staking that's that's mm -hmm. a very concrete economic way yeah yeah um this is one of my favorite lines here you know because i think it brings together you know there all these different parts um of the performance um that are defined separately you know that i think are, are fabulous and then it it kind of brings it together here um, at the end, you know, that it's saying that it's all of these things in one, and that's what it's opening up, like uh, something yeah. produced with potential measurable social significance, be it a physical good, a service, or an intangible, could be offered to the network. It Anything, is, yeah. It is expressed socially yeah. performance, qualitatively as a measurement of value, quantitatively as a performance index, and made investable as a stake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very concise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. I'm wondering if we want to open the uh the conversation up a little bit. Uh, sorry, yeah. I really sorry three o'clock. So I know that's what I was thinking too.
Yeah, let me just say in the end, kind of what I, what I was thinking in the end, that it's really the key key piece in the grammar because it, it opens the game. It kind of allows you to start entering into this, making economically relatable, economically expressible things that processes that can, can before where, where we were not able to do do that. So so it's really tooling, tooling for that, the performance. Yeah, so if people want to turn their cameras, say hi, and unmute. And, and, and there, Leo, it's a, yeah. Crazy talk, guys. That's uh, wonderful stuff. Loved it. Great. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit uh, abstract on the abstract side because it's again the most open programmable surface of the whole protocol, and I know that makes it a little bit inaccessible. But let's see if we can ground it further. I if I could give an example right that could ground yeah. also some of this stuff, um, yeah. like uh, so, and I I think it also connects a bit to uh, something you were saying earlier, Jorge, about um, like, and again, I'm not I'm not saying like. Anyway, um, yeah, so like imagine, right, like you've got a farmer and then they produce for a restaurant, right, or something. And the the narrative that they're producing for is um, let, I want to give food. I want uh, people to be able to eat food. And so then people need to be able to eat food, but the access of the second spaces access to the first space is dependent on whether the farmers are able to also, whether they fit the narrative, whether the restaurant recognizes that the farmers fit their narrative. And if that doesn't happen, then the ability for the, the restaurant to have access to the farm's food stops. So even at that level with just two spaces, you've got a completely circular loop where like it's sustainable in that like the farmers can eat and the restaurant produces the food. And the question is, what's the narrative that the restaurant chooses? Like, you know, environmental yeah. standards or something. Um, and depending on that, the, you've got the derivative recognition of their narrative by the following inputs. So it's like, what I'm trying to point out here is like how the, th this kind of setup makes it so that the the ultimate power behind like what narratives can actually occur goes further and further and further down to the most base inputs um and as they like are the preconditions of possibility for any of the other things yeah there's this kind of sense in the chapter of there of there being like kind of a higher order and lower order you know we take like sub performances yeah. and 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 I, I, there's a number of different kind of terms and they're kind of universe, uh, spatial universe that are kind of opening up some things there, right? Like what is a higher, like what kind of time space do we imagine that a performance occupies to get kind of very practical? You know, I we've been doing it in the labs as if it's like three months or something like that. But in the in this chapter, it gets more of the feeling of like a year. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that that's, we have mm -hmm. a certain idea, of course, with the infinite expressibility of the ESP, it could be five minutes, you know, but, you know, I, but it sounds like when, when I'm reading you guys that it, it sounds like it's a, well, I'm going to let you know about the clean air data. I mean, it sounds bigger. Is that wrong? I think what's really important uh, to, to recognize here uh, beyond any of the examples even is um, the relational dimension to performance and the utilization of the products of performance. I mean, rather than sort of like this abstract and reified consumption or kinds of work where you're only sort of contributing a very small part without knowing anything about the rest of the narrative, like when you do those captures, you know, you don't know if you're like decoding documents for the CIA or whatever to get to get on uh, on to, to pass some security code to be a real person. Here, well, you know the relationships, right? And even if you can't know every relationship, because no person can possibly know every relationship, you know locally the relationships and the relationships that are more proximate to your productivity and your consumption you know better, right? And, and so this becomes socialized in a way that they're not right now. And that, that discursive dialogical dimension, I think is an extremely important feature of what we're discussing. Mm. Uh, what what yeah. would you have to say? Go ahead, Dick. No, no, you, you, you go ahead. 
Um, yeah, the, and maybe this is something also you can you can mention um, uh, 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 or comment about it. But um, there's this 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 footnote somewhere saying that um, in the value value theory of performance uh, 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 framing, we can uh, draw upon uh, Strafa's or Strafa's uh, depiction of commodities by means of commodities. In this mm -hmm. case, performances by means of performances, and the reason why why I'm mentioning this is um, eventually performances loop back, and the the outputs of another one become the inputs of one of the ones in the beginning. So what you end up with describing the whole network is all these uh, uh, cycles of cycles of performativity, and uh, what what is interesting about that is that on one hand that is actually describing is the governance of the system as a whole is describing the bounds by which everything that happens is happening right it's sort of like what is economically happening what is being performing is what uh, what we are doing basically uh that we deem valuable but on the other hand it's also that it's not being imposed on us by by a subgroup like it's being informed and modulated on an ongoing basis by the whole but it it can never stop uh, having this quality of uh, circularity and cyclicity. Otherwise, stop being an eco stops being an economy, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. W what else can you comment about that, Dick, or or if anyone else also mm -hmm. like contribute? Just really quickly, I'd, I'd like to, to say something. Although I do do we give space to other people, uh, there there are a couple of things, and, and these are little things that 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 cause me concern about 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 the loop process i mean I, I sort of think of it as as hayek wants to talk about a tapestry and you see all these beautiful weavings of market processes that 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 form a picture and what we're more really interested in doing is turning it around and seeing the back and all the tied off threads and 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 all the connections because mm -hmm. because that's the performance of the tapestry if you if if you like and that's where the interest lies as much as in the the artwork on the front um but a little thing that worries me you know wearing my economist hat uh, two issues about these 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 links one is um you know if if john's t-shirts are elevating in in value because of the, the of the brand and, and his influence how do you how do you attribute that elevated value between the 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 brand itself and for example, the performance that produced the dyes or that produced the cotton uh, that may not be specific to, to that brand. So there's always that, how do you attribute value back down the line of a, of a, of a sequence of performances? Um, I think we've got to face that. The other question that I think we need to consider is how do we know that this network will produce outputs in the proportions that the, that the network needs. How do we know that, that everyone might just be out there producing T-shirts and, and that, that someone is going to produce the dyes or the cottons or the, you know, back down the chain that, that, that we've been talking about of performances of performances mm. of performances. How do we, you know, in economics, there's this, this, this literature on proportionality. It's something that is, it, it, that, that, that um, Strata's really concerned about, the matrices of, of, reproduction we don't we actually haven't talked about that uh mm -hmm. at, at all in our yeah. analysis but but it's going it's, a good it's going to be an important issue so and i just throw my hands up and say hey you can't talk about everything but we need to be a, a, aware of that this could be a a, a design issue that, that that hasn't been addressed nice yeah Catherine has her hand up yeah, just just sort of thinking about um, the problem you raised, Dirk, about sort of how to ensure that like somebody will produce the dyes when like ultimately the emphasis needs to be on the creativity of of uh, individuals and groups to kind of yeah present what they think is valuable to the network and then have that um, responded to. And I think uh, it sort of made me think of this article I read recently by Jasper Burns, and he talks about. Um, like having a sort of anarchy where like you you sort of allow for the like anarchy and like creative freedom of humans like that's sort of a fundamental characteristic that we have and 
to sort of impose a plan where like you dictate everything that is to be produced and how much quantities and under what conditions kind of uh, negates that freedom. So it's a kind of balance between the sort of anarchic freedom and creativity of individuals with like the need to have um, some sort of, yeah, some sort of like plan that does say that these things need to be produced in order for other things to be able to to flourish. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was an interesting, I could post the article in the chat maybe if people are interested, but it, it sort of grapples with that um, that sort of tension quite well, I think. Yeah, I mean, what, yeah, what I, I see that um, being dealt with uh, by the architecture we're describing is the, um, again, the dialogical aspect <clears throat> of um, performativity, because uh, in um, current economics, you have uh, the historical devaluation of certain functions and certain people who um, who perform those functions. I mean, particularly, you know, in the garment industry, but I mean, in, in, in most industries where you have um, devalued um people divided through colonization and racism and gender inequality doing the kind of the grunt work which is at the base of some of these of these economic uh, productions like the, you know people who make the thread um but uh in a dialogical um relationship the rec mutual recognition uh between um performers uh change the dynamics change and I mean I, I don't think that's an easy that, that doesn't answer structural inequality and historically produced inequality but it sort of opens an avenue for the renegotiation of relative values between producers. Because if you have to assemble performances based upon an open script, then there's a greater possibility of mutual recognition and mutual cooperation. People will take advantage of historical leverage difference, no doubt. Mm -hmm. but, but, but I think the conversation opens to um, a way in which that inequality can be attenuated uh, very radically, actually. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's the way uh, the closed performance, oh, open performance. Like, yeah, it's this, that, and I like that this starts to get talked about here, where you know you have broadly known outputs on the one hand, and that's something we might know that we need to have there in a chain. But then also, as you say here, um, open performances or performances offered to the commons will, will be open rather than will likely be the open rather than closed, um, because they need to have this ongoingness to be worked out to have the flex of the of the agents mm -hmm. so that they don't fall back into some of these uh, um, kind of prior leverage positions that you're talking about, John. Mm. So, so yeah, just, just picking up on a, a particular aspect of that, the more economic aspect of it and, and going to both Tansel's reference to input output analysis, which does come up in about chapter eight or nine, only a, only a, a one line mm -hmm. reference to input output analysis. There's where, 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 where the, 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 the book starts talking about loops rather than just discrete discrete acts um but but the the, the thing is that the the network needs input outputs put metrics it needs guidance uh of the planarchy so the dimensions that are getting talked about there about what's the coordinating mechanism here but I, I think the thing is, rather than saying we that that there is a uh, you know a central body that does the input output metrics uh, or, or gives the direction, that the flow of information in this network is or is privately offered to the network as as a performance, uh, because there's no single input output analysis that is correct. There are probably there's no overarching view of every little piece of this this economy that has to coordinate in a, in a in a predetermined way there will be volatilities there will be ambiguities there will be tensions that have to be reacted to so the idea that you can smooth these out if you just get the plan right i, I think we're sort of giving up mm. His, you know history says give up on that that level of coordinated decision making um but I think it's important that we see that there are things like input-output analyses, but data production, the codification, the, the giving of meaning to data is itself a performance mm -hmm. that, that agents will will offer to the network. So I can imagine there'll be performances of, of input-output metrics for the, the overall network that are being, are, are being offered and valued by the network the same way that John's T-shirts are being offered and valued. Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts from folks? Uh, 
questions, puzzles, comments? Uh, on just a, a point on like a narrative of narratives, um, it's like you can have sequences of narratives and transition functions between them. So it like you can upgrade in terms of like the interoperability and like backwards compatibility of like whether, you know, like a narrative can be, you can transition towards a new one. And then I can recognize your transitioning towards a new narrative, like the restaurant or any restaurant might say, anyone who is combating climate change eats for free. That's the narrative of who gets access. But then that's so like their standards might be so restrictive that other people might not recognize that. So it's like, what is the transition function towards a new narrative? And then do I recognize that meta narrative? And that is what might go so, back. So that would be like an example of like, they propose measures for what constitutes uh, fighting climate change. I forget what you said. And other people are like, I don't think those are good measures. Those are too strict. So I don't recognize your, your whole looped operation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, terms, yeah. And and what is really interesting again about this is that uh, it offers agents in the network the capacity to modulate other performances by creating these meta performances on top of them. It's this sort of like an injecting of new opportunity, new, hey, I'm valuing differently what you're producing. Maybe you can coordinate it differently as to like uh, adhere itself better to that form of value that gives us this transition uh, uh, path, right? Towards mm -hmm. like a different form of appreciation, different for, form of engagement. And that's that's part of like what, what I think is important also to highlight in here, like uh, in terms of as an organizing medium, right? We tend to, in, in, in the current, um, with the current tools, we tend to conceive of this uh, silos, a corporation, an individual, and then they're, they're very well defined and separate, right? You have your ledger, I have my ledger. You have the data on your ledger, the, I have my data on your on my ledger. But what this is allowing is for that information to span and compile across the network, but also for that, for certain behaviors to also span across the network. So basically, it 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 does create this like higher order agents or agencies, higher order values, higher order performances, a higher order of like coming together that we we usually don't, we don't we don't necessarily recognize or can reflect ourselves back as part of that because they are just so large and so um, mm -hmm. uh, detailed, right? In 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 its flows. So now we can trace those things with with this kind of performance. Yeah, framing. yeah. Yeah, express express them. Yeah. Yeah. So in the labs node where I've been recently like joining in that conversation, we've been um, thinking about different performances to propose and the measures for them. In that mm -hmm. conversation, we've mostly been thinking about like pretty like concrete measures of these performances, almost like the way that a documentarian would approach their subjects. It's like, we were thinking about the number of hours, the number of new members, because, because we're thinking about how we need to quantify like numerically what, what performance is going on. Mm -hmm. But in this chapter, the sort of theoretical frame helps me see a, a different way that doesn't need to like have this almost documentarian approach to quantifying and measuring. Instead, the like social, socially valued number or value, numerical value of something might be like very decoupled from, from an indexical thing. Here's mm -hmm. the example. Like let's say in John's fashion target thing, John's canceled for some reason and even though he's we all know that he's very fashionable we're not going to validate his performance so in that case uh there's like a, a big gap between um like socially recognizing something and and recording that in the in the ledger i guess right what we want to record and maybe something that we're keeping private or as i've been thinking about developing performances sometimes 
when I when it comes to articulating a measure for that performance, I fall back on uh, things that are more associated with like capitalist ways of measuring, like mm-hmm. yeah, hours worked, view count, things like that. Um, because we have, I, I've been exposed to those before, for whatever reason. They're they're easily easy to think up. Whereas, like, if I want to do a performance that I don't know how to measure, on the one hand, I can I can decide to take up like a, a mismeasuring something like views doesn't actually measure the value of my video that I'm making, um, or I can like offer something totally almost unrelated that can't be measured, but mm-hmm. people might see value in any way, which th- that way of sort of speculating and decoupling the measure more from sort of fundamentals uh, is something that I started thinking about when reading this and mm-hmm. it hasn't come up in the other conversation. And I'm not sure if that's like an intended consequence of this protocol to be able to sort of really detach from like documentary reality or uh yeah that's something else yeah yeah i i would say that the the more that the protocol and the evolves and the more templates there are i think the tendency will be to uh the people will prefer something the more automated the better Right. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, recording something or valuing it doesn't necessarily need, need necessarily need to be like a converted to a number. Not necessarily. Sometimes maybe it can just it be a video, for instance. And the fact that it's watch, there's an an evaluation process that is is reflected back. Maybe not necessarily by by uh, keeping track of certain numbers, but again indirectly by other. Uh, how much time a particular person invested watching it, okay, the view, uh, how many shares, uh, ultimately staking, right? So, but I do see a roadblock um, in in demanding or expecting uh, economic agents to be very uh, uh, detailed about what they record. Uh, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that that's going to happen. If anything, the tendency is like people don't want to <laughs> to deal with that generally. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like the that I, that I wrote to Dick for some time when I was in Finland and it was like 3 a.m. And I was like, how many units of account are there going to be? You know, I thought there was going to be like so many. And I woke up thinking, oh, there's no, oh, that's going to be like a, a fight of popularity. And it's, we're still going to have a diversity, but it's going to be like, I'm like, is it going to be 11? 11? <laughs> uh, so people, people get granular and subtle about the things they really care about. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. You know, if you, if you, you know, I, I shouldn't confess that I watch TikTok, but I always end up confessing it. But, you know, there, 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 there's so much variation in the way in which, you know, somebody might, you know, wear a shirt or the way in which, like, they might organize a room, right? And, the, and so you get in these weird TikTok sort of, like, zones, like, silos, I guess. And then, like, you know, if your couch is against the wall, it means certain things. You know, you find out, you know, all, all, all this different kind of stuff. And like, you know, most people don't care about this, but I mean, when you do care, you get interested, then those little distinctions become really significant. And I think of them as kinds of currencies, right? Sort of like mm-hmm. soft currencies, right? And so I think we're going to see the issuance of, you know, we're talking about performances as um, things that could be compiled, but their distinctions will be these forms of soft currency in a way where people will sort of like, you know, get into this uh, relationship and sort of like validate a certain aspect of making differences, which is important to them. And uh, that may spread, it might be ephemeral. I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen to it, but each of those futures has its own set of potentials. And I, th- I think what's really interesting is like, we can't really imagine the the the, the, the full feel of this kind of literacy. We, we, we don't know mm-hmm. what, like, and that, that's super exciting to me. Yeah. That's a cool way to say Indeed. it. That what you care about, if you care about something that does kind of, it's like, yeah, there is gonna be this agglomeration of popular metrics that are easy, but there's just like all sorts of wonderful niche cultures, you know, which we're all apart. That's going to drive that. I think you're so right. That's really, that's a really good way of saying it. I agree. Good point. Well, I know we've got a bit, should we uh, call it any last words? Anybody? I, I have last couple of sentences. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the measurement thing, I think one of, like one of the possible cool ways um, that I'm, I'm really, interested in quantifying particularly is the 
extent to which quantitative extent to which uh, um, you perceive that a performance fits a narrative. And like, that is for me, like one of the most beautiful mm -hmm. indexes. Um, and yeah. yeah I mean, well, thank you everybody uh, so much for spending the time with us and thinking these things and uh, share the video and download that article now. Otherwise I'll share it. I'll share it later too, if you don't get a chance. I'm like download it and I just press close them, close it right away. Um, I'm like writing things down in notes so that I can have the chat later. It was a really good discussion. Um, really appreciate it. all your time. Okay. All right. Thanks, Joe. Oh.